Good morning, everyone. I welcome all of you to St. Matthew's this morning. And also, my welcome extend to you, those who are joining us via Zoom and Facebook. Well, it's a Lord's Day, so shall we all stand, if you're able, for a call to worship. Come to the Lord this day. Place your lives in the loving hands of God. May God be your and strengthen us. Trust in God, who is always with us. Eternal God, protector of all who put their trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, fit us with your mercy and your grace, so that with you rule and guide us, we may rightly use the good things of this life and not neglect those of eternal world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. To our joys and concerns. Um, I am saddened to announce the death of Howard Borderworth. Please keep the family in your prayers and a special prayer request for Pam. She's having surgery tomorrow. So please keep the Borderworth family in your prayers. We are also asking for prayers for Xavier Davila and family and prayers for John and Carol Matamor. We also are requesting prayers for Carolyn and Steve Fisher. Carolyn will be having surgery this Tuesday, so if you could please keep them in your prayers. And we are also requesting prayers for Samuel Lilly, a friend of Karen Hastings. Samuel is suffering from an aggressive melanoma of his lungs, so please keep the, uh, Samuel in your prayers as well. 
Thank you. With all the names shared before us, shall we bow our heads and pray. O oh God, when you wrestled with Jacob, you marked him, named him, and called him your own. You called the poor a people, and with your oath, you promised that they would endure. You gave them the law, and you went before them by night and by day. We give you thanks for Jacob, Leah, and Rachel and their descendants. We give you thanks for Christ Jesus, whose name we now bear through baptism. He went about teaching what it means to obey. He fulfilled your law as he served all those in need. By his death, he atoned for the sins of your people. He interceded for all as he was hung on a cross. But death could not keep him, and he lives now in our midst. We give you thanks for the Holy Spirit who guides us today. The Spirit serves as assurance that you do not leave us alone. The Spirit instills in us a zeal to serve so that we perform tasks in accord with your will. By the Spirit, we are led to people in want, confronted by thorny issues and prodded to enlarge our horizons. Loving God, in this moment, we pause for a moment in our silent prayer for those names that shared out loud and for all the names that remain in our hearts. Our Lord Jesus promised us whenever and wherever there are two or more gathered and pray in his name, he always answered. His answer sometimes may not be exactly the same as we want or expected, but he answers our prayer. So with that conviction, we lift up all these names back to you. And we give you thanks for the scripture that bears witness to your presence. The words leap from the pages and challenge our timid ways. Keep us mindful, O God, of those who have gone before us and of the history in which we stand. During this hour of worship, let your Holy Spirit Inspire us and guide us, so what we do, glorify your name. And as we leave this place, let your Holy Spirit guide us through our day-to-day -day living and make disciples of Christ wherever, whoever, whenever we need people. Gracious God, we dare to pray all this the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and the letter people of the church say Amen. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us to pray. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, shall we all stand, if you're able, for him before creature. <laughs> Thank you. 
So today is epistle reading from Paul's letter to Romans, chapter 7, verses 15 through 25. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact, it is no longer I that do, the, do it but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. Remain standing for the reading of the gospel. according to Matthew chapter 11 verses 16 through 19 and 25 through 30. Jesus said, But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We play the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a gluten and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, 
and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So this week, I have learned a car trick, and it's really hard. And when I do it, it is going to blow your mind. Ready? Are you ready, London? I'm so excited to share it with you. Okay, so I want you to pick a card, London, and I'm going to guess which card you pick. Are you ready? Right? Oh, yes. Woo. That one, that was a hard trip, wasn't it? <clears throat> I'll teach you how to do it. But first, well, no, let me tell you how I did it. How do you think I did that? Pick the card. Anybody can do it. I mean, you might need to practice. Chris Rhea, how did I do this trip? <laughs> yes. I can see every card you pick, right? So it's really not a card trick, is it? <laughs> you know, sometimes we make God's love into something really difficult, and we pretend that it's hard. But the fact is that Jesus already gives us the love of God. That's a wonderful gift. And sometimes we try to make it harder than it actually is, don't we? We may say God can't love us this easily, like this card game. As easy as this card game, but he can and he does. In our scripture today, Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hear those words and let them sink into your hearts. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. I think we all are guilty of sometimes making our burdens heavier than they need to be, don't we? We make God's love in, into this hard and difficult thing. When we hear Jesus, he says, my love is for you and it's easy when we receive it. Truthfully, we, we live endless out of the grace and love of our God. We don't earn God's love. God's love is given to us as a gift. When we choose to receive God's love and peace, and we can share that love and peace with others, can't we? So let us pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for Jesus, who kept sharing your love and peace, no matter what happened, so that we could receive it and then share it. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right.
sanctuary is getting heat up, so if you feel hot, feel free to fan yourself, and if you have a jacket, take it off. I may take my robe off sometime. <laughs> a parishioner goes off to sleep during the sermon one Sunday morning. When all who want to go to heaven stand, the pastor said, the entire congregation stood except for the lone sleeping parishioner. The pastor implored them to sit down and continue speaking dramatically. Now will all who want to dance with the devil please stand? Just then, somebody dropped a hymnal on the wooden floor. And the sleeping man jumped to his feet and looked around and sheepishly. Well, pastor, I don't know what we are voting for, but it looks like you and I are the only ones for it. <laughs> the reading from Romans today talks about our human limitations. The Apostle Paul described a constant war going on within himself. He said, I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. I find it a rule that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see it in my body another law at war with the law of my mind. Wretched man that I am. What a confession. Apostle Paul understand us better than we understand ourselves. He knows that to be human is to find yourself in one tangled mess after another. Sometimes the mess is of our own making. Sometimes it comes from our own rebellion. Sometimes our best efforts are corrupted by the power of sin. Today, he simply holds up a mirror and invites us to look at ourselves. He speaks about a war continuing within himself. He tries to do the right thing, but it doesn't always work out that way. He knows he has been claimed by Jesus Christ, called to live as God's apostle, and filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He knows this, yet it is one thing to know it, it is another to live it day by day. He says, I detect another force at work in my life. Even his best effort can be corrupted. Such is the power of sin. Less and less we hear about sin, and people get very uncomfortable talking about sin. Earlier in this chapter, Paul says, I wouldn't have known what it is to covet, except the law said, Thou shalt not covet. As soon as I heard that law, I started wanting what other people have. It is like a mother who says, now kids, don't get dirty, stay out of the mud. And kids look at each other, there's a mud? Where's the mud? Next thing you know, they are up to their ears in it. She yells at them, I told you to stay out of the mud. But mother, they didn't know it exists until you told them to stay out of it. Paul says, this is a dark power of sin. Sin takes something good like the law of God and twists it all around. The law says don't cut it. Paul says, sin seizing an opportunity produced in me all kinds of covetousness. I was deceived and it killed me. Now pay attention here. He was trying to do the right thing and he got all messed up. Do you think it's possible for people to comb their hair, 
go to church, sing the hymns, pray the prayer, and make the offering, and then turn on one another, attack one another. Yes, it can happen. Even at the point of our best effort, personally, nationally, ecclesial, sin seizes whatever it can. Paul talks about our human condition. We are good sometimes, we are bad sometimes. Dual nature of being humans. So, are we doomed? Are we hopeless? Maybe not so. Our Gospel reading today contains one of the most familiar passages in the Bible. Most of us probably know it in words of one of the older translations. Come unto me, all ye that faith labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This Matthew chapter 11 for centuries has been used for comforting the grieving, encouraging the struggling, and giving hope when all else seems to have failed. We read it, we underline it, we memorize it, and we trust these words when nothing else seems to trustworthy. Come unto me. It is a wonderful invitation from our Lord himself. In our translation, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It is not only an invitation, but it is also a promise. Because he said, you will find rest for your soul. My yoke is easy. The words themselves can ease our situation and enliven hope. It is strange then that though we know these words so well, if you are like me, you probably have little sense of their original setting in Matthew's Gospel. The danger in this is that if we do not know their setting, we may misappropriate them and take them to mean things that Jesus could not have meant. Or worse, we may not see where they really do apply most profoundly. Clearly, Jesus could not have meant that in this life all our weariness and burdens of work, poor health, poverty, and the like will disappear. The life of a Christian is not just staying in bed. One day all our burden will be lifted, but here Jesus is not speaking primarily of eternal life in heaven. He is speaking to his followers in the midst of their participation in his mission. He said, come to me now and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. So what is this rest? What is this yoke of Christ that we are to take upon us? A yoke that is easy. Jesus is not talking about a vacation. He is not referring to some eternal rest far in the future. He is speaking of our being connected to God. Holy Father St. Augustine says that our hearts are restless until they find their rest in God. We find our rest in God when we come to Jesus. We find everything there is to know of God in Jesus, because Jesus is the embodiment of God in flesh. Come to me, he says. Of course, it is likely that we have found Jesus through Christianity, through the church, in the Bible, 
But in so far as all of these things, Christianity, church, denomination, Bible, doctrines, commandments, have been created and articulated with the help of human individuals and communities. They themselves are not God. Even the commandments themselves were given because of sin. All of these things may be instruments that God can use to reach us, but they may, not, they may also be obstacles, things that get between us and God. It is not without reason that people say they cannot believe in God because of Christianity. We believe, oh, church cannot be that way. Horrible things have been done by Christians and in the name of Christianity that certainly isn't conducive to belief in God. The same is true of the church. Many have found a church and its teaching, structures, practices, and traditions to be anything but godly. People spend years getting over the psychological damage they have suffered from some church. Likewise, the Bible and the commandment can be used like club to beat us down and make us feel worthless, or they can be interpreted in such irrational and such superstitious ways that thinking person simply throw their hands up in despair. This is nothing new. Religion and moral laws have always verged on being oppressive, most likely because they come with so much weight attached to them, because we believe that they have to do with God. It was no different in Jesus' time when he spoke of being weary from carrying heavy burdens. It is likely that he was thinking specifically of the burden of religion with its laws and demands. The clue to this interpretation is in Jesus' use of the word yoke. A yoke is a wooden frame that holds two oxen or other animals side by side to enable them to work together to pull a wagon or a plow. It is a burden under which they grow weary. A yoke-shaped device was also an ancient symbol of defeat and slavery when conquered people were made to wear such a thing. In other words, a yoke was both an actual burden and a symbol of oppression, and is often used in a symbolic way in the Bible. Both the Bible itself and the rabbinic teachings speak of the law as a yoke. The rabbis meant this in a positive way in terms of glorious obedience to God and then freed people from the obligations of the world. Jesus, on the other hand, contrasts our coming to him and putting on Christ with a burdensome yoke of all kinds of law, whether expressed in commandments or in religious dogmas or Christian institutions. Learn from me, he says, not do this or else, but take my yoke upon you and learn from me. My yoke is easy, gentle, kind. Learn from me. It does not mean that Christianity is a lark. He still uses the word yoke after all. But we might think of it as a new way of carrying life. A new way of bearing responsibilities. As we learn from him, as we take his words and word seriously, which is that taking his yoke upon us means we will find a new kind of peace and balance that will not be burdensome, but freeing and refreshing. 
His yoke is easy in the sense that it becomes not only our duty, but our delight. To take Christ's yoke upon us is to learn from him about his words and his teachings. His yoke is not a system, not a law, not a religion, but a communion with a person. Communion of a risen Christ through his words and sacraments. As if to underscore this personal aspect, Jesus himself added, For I am gentle and humble in, in heart. God with a human face, as someone has said. In Christ, God stooped over to us and becomes available and approachable. The righteous person, Scripture says, lives by faith, by trust. Faith, trust, are a personal relationship. A personal relationship means relationship to person, not to the thing. That's what Jesus invites us to, to walk with him in service, to talk with him in prayer, to dine with him in his supper, to be his own and find rest for our souls. That is a most promising invitation from the Lord of heaven and earth himself for you and I to respond to that. Apostle Paul once exclaimed, Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? He did not end right there. But he continued on. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, we are saved through him. So Christ is calling us, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Are you willing to join me in responding to Christ's invitation by saying, Yes, Amen. 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 Let us pray. Your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. Gracious God, save us from these burdens and heavy yoke in this world. Save us from all this doctrine, dogma, institutional religion that put us down, but free us. Free us so we can freely believe in you and drink your spirit and rejoice in you. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite Gary Allen for Mission Moment. Would you come up, please? It seems entirely appropriate for me to talk about the mission moment this morning because I believe all of us have been yoke fellows in the tradition that just outlined by JW. The Bowie Supportive Housing Corporation lives by a covenant. A covenant, a bond, a pledge, a commitment. On July the 7th, 2022, we signed a covenant with Lutheran Social Services to provide a year-long commitment to a family recently escaped from Afghanistan. Many of you have met that family, seen the people that your resources and commitment have helped support this past year. We met with Sammy again just this past week and on Monday, we'll sign with him a new commitment, extending our bond 
pledge and commitment to his family for at least three additional months because he came here out of hiding with nothing and he has made remarkable progress as have over the past eight years since we reconfigured the housing corporation 22 other clients all of whom have signed a covenant with us because we made with them a bond a pledge and a commitment thanks to the resources that you have helped provide us over the past 30 years to the St. Matthews Housing Corporation, which now does business as the Bowie Supportive Housing Corporation. Because we reconfigured our way of thinking about this in light of a number of changes that are going on, many of which JW just outlined, the changing demographics of our community, the COVID crisis, which we are now just recovering from, the changing commitments of our community and the changing commitments of Christian communities in our community. Our work has grown from the commitment of a single congregation to now embrace that of a dozen congregations here in this community. And it is with their support that we have been able to provide help for Sammy's family, and as I say, 22 other victims of domestic violence. Our work runs currently about $225 a day. Fully staffed and with both houses, it costs us about $300 a day to run this program. It's not an inexpensive commitment to make because each month in Prince George's County, more than 110 young women with their children under 12 are victims of domestic violence. More than 90 million people are on the move as refugees in the world today. In the United States, we will accept nearly 340,000 legal immigrants who are processed by the courts, not to mention those we read about in the newspapers and here on television every day, the more than 1.8 million cases that are currently pending in our courts around the nation. And from Afghanistan, we have seen 97,000 refugees since the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. So the, our program has been in a state of transition from one focused on a single congregation to one that involves many. But in every case, we have signed and continue to try to keep our bond, our pledge, our promise. So help me God with your help. This work will continue to be a vital part of collaborative community mission in the year ahead. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Gary. Now, as we prepare our tithing offerings, shall we bow it and pray. In the cross of Christ, I glory, towering o'er the wrecks of time, all the light of sacred story gathers around its head sublime. As we glory, in the cross of Christ, O oh God. So we also seek to serve the cause for which he died. Accept the gifts placed before you, the symbols of our commitment. May the light of your sacred story shine forth for all to see. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank 
I invite you to read the announcement in the bulletin and especially uh, note the dates of all the uh, things happening in the week. And uh, there is no other announcement, so shall we all stand, if you're able, for the closing hymn.
receive the benediction. Go into the world, all you who are weary and burdened, having experienced for this short hour the rest that come in the presence of Christ. May you go now refreshed and encouraged to seek his will and do the work of the one who said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And now go in peace. Amen. Amen.